probably some athletic trainers, support staff that are back. Uh, so we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to meet with some of them. Um, obviously a lot of folks, but there's a rationale between uh, uh, by picking these two. We're going to give you some breaking news here in a second. So all y'all get your Twitter accounts up. Get it up. Wiser, I know you watch Wiser's fingers right there. Okay, y'all all know Willie already. It's been announced Willie is going to be going in the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame next month. Uh, he'll be the fourth member of the Georgia basketball family to go into the Hall of Fame uh, with Coach Durham, Dominique, Alec Kessler, and then Willie will be the fourth. So that's next month in Macon. Uh, but it's not known, but uh, at this year's SEC tournament, Rod Cole will serve as our legend. And of course, Rod was a great player here and was a, a driving force to find some really, really good teams, including uh, Georgia's uh, only SEC championship team in 1990, and it's the 30th anniversary of that. So there's some breaking news on Rod. So congratulations on y'all having something to write about before the game even started. Yeah. But with that, we'll, uh, and then of course, I'm sorry, and uh, obviously we're happy everyone's here, but the sad news yesterday of, of the passing of Terry Fair. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over and let uh, Coach Durham maybe say a few words about Terry, and then we'll open it up for questions. We are gonna ask y'all to get a microphone. We've got one here, um, so that uh, the people that are recording in the back um, can uh, can get the audio. So, Terry was part of the um, first full class that, that we recruited. Uh, he played on a team that was the number one high school team in the country um, that year, and uh, down in Southwest. And then he came in, and at the same time that. Uh, Dominic and Terry and, and uh, Lamar and Derek Floyd uh, and the, the thing I remember about Terry and I told Mike the other day when we, when we most of the guys that come to the University of Georgia at that time and now you ask them what they want to do, and they say they want to go to the next level. And his senior year, the year that we went to the Final Four, we're playing in New York. We're playing in Syracuse, and uh, we're playing the Beast of the East, which at that time was St. John's, and they were seeded one, and Ohio State was there in North Carolina was there. And St. John's was one, Carolina was two, Ohio State was seated three, we were seated four. Well, we play St. John's and Terry gets, and Mike, you can you can help me on this, but I thought it was like 26 and 11 and what what it, what was it? It was uh, 26 points, uh, 20, career high 27 points, nine rebounds, five assists, three blocks, three steals. Mm -hmm. And that, you get that, that's a pretty good line. <laughs> I mean, better than that. Okay, well, we win the game. So we're going to be playing Carol, Carolina in the next game. So beginning the second half, Terry gets in foul trouble with about two minutes gone by in the half, and I put Richard Corden in the game. And everything clicked for us. We were shooting the ball well. They were playing man-to-man, -man and we were able to handle their man-to-man. -man. And Terry never got back in the game. Never got back in the game. Now here's a guy who wants to go to the next level. He just had a fantastic line. And he never said anything negative. A lot of guys would have been going into the locker room complaining, complaining, well, hey man, you're, you're, you're messing me up. Why didn't I get in the game? Why didn't I get in the game? And what you found out about Terry, all he was is pumped up that we were able to win, which would put us in the Final Four. Kind of a sidebar on that, we would have the, the, the team out to eat on a number of occasions, and Willie and Rod probably remember that. So we're, we're having ribs, and Terry gets in the front of the line. Now, on the court, he's a team player. If you ask him to guard the other guy's toughest guy, he guards him. But he had to go on the floor, he'd go on the floor, he rebounded the ball, he wasn't selfish, 
He was a great guy to coach. <laughs> but once he stepped off the floor, it was a different story. So he's in the front of the line and he gets all these ribs and he took so many. And how many how many pounds did we have? You, how many? Fifty-five pounds of ribs. He took enough where two guys didn't get any. And then so off the floor, team on the floor, it was team, not me, but it was going through the food line, it was me, not team. And so after that, Terry, Terry ended up, Terry ended up going last when we when he had the team over. Another story, I'm going into the office one day, I stopped by Dunkin' Donuts to get a couple of donuts and some coffee on the way to come over here to the facility and it's at like six o'clock and I see Fair in somebody else's car, he was driving probably his girlfriend's. Anyway, I see him down there, Baxter and, and, and Millage, I guess it was, and so I tell the trainer when he comes in, have, have him come up and see me. And so he comes up there and I say, well, I saw you this morning, you know, about six o'clock. And he looks at me and says, coach, what time's curfew over? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but one, one thing about being you know, a really good player, If your teammates like you, you know you're a good guy. Because really good players get a lot of attention, they get a lot of publicity. And that means they live with... Melinda and I have talked a lot about chemistry. And I think we, we, we come to, to agree on that chemistry is developed off the floor just as much or more than it is on. Because when practice starts, a coach can be in control. I mean, if a guy misses somebody, doesn't hit him, you say something to him, you know, you know that guy next time, look, if this takes place, look over here, whatever. But off the floor when, is where teams really bond. And, and Terry was part of one of those teams. And he was a big part of that. And, uh, you know, he's the second one off of that second starter off that team who's not with us anymore because Lamar passed a couple of years ago and everybody in that era that played with him is definitely going to miss him. The, the, the players, the, the coaches, uh, managers, trainers and so he, he, he was a special guy and so are these two so if you got questions for them or for me then we'll, we'll take it from here. This is 30 years since the main SEC championship team and it remains the only regular season title. Um, we've had visiting coaches come in here and talk about what a great job this is and what a great place this is and the talent, etc. What makes this so difficult in terms of, of reaching that level of success at Georgia? Well, you know, it's, it's certainly different than when, when we came here, uh, we thought it was a really great opportunity. It was a good job then, and I think it's a better job now. Uh, facilities are so different. Uh, one of the times that, that you get better is out of season. And now we've got as, as good of facilities as anybody in the country. I don't think Georgia, over the last X number of years, lost any player because of facility. The first day I really started recruiting was on a Saturday morning. We, we had the announcement, the press conference on Friday, and I forget the date, but it was at the end of uh, March and right before the, the, the <coughs> tournament at, at the Final Four. So I get here, the air conditioner hadn't been turned on yet. And so I got the, the window open and it looks out over the barns. 
And I got Jeff Thomas, and some of you might remember Jeff. He was in New York, and I get him on the phone, and I'm talking to him. And some of the cattle out there start moving. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Coach, what's that noise? <laughs> oh, it's a bunch of horns out there. <laughs> and which was true, but it, it was four-legged horns and not automobile horns. <laughs> so they, they, we couldn't use this facility in the off season. So we go down to Stegman and they got four courts down there and we couldn't reserve one because they were open to all the students. And so, I mean, if we had reserved a court and two guys are out there working on their outside shot or whatever, the university is going to get criticized. And so, you know, our guys go down there and they play the pickup games and some guy over here thinks he ought to be starting on the varsity so he wants to get in the game. And anyway, it wasn't a real good, you know, good facility to try to improve your game. That's different. So facilities have really improved. And once, once you get that, uh, it's all about players. I mean, you you you, get, you have to you have to get good players. I mean, you, if you don't have good players, I don't care how you coach. All that you're going to have is, and and I, I'll. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, ask these guys some questions, and you know, because once you get retired, you can talk a long time. <laughs> you know, I mean, so I'm, you know, so, so these guys are still working. So go ahead. <laughs> so for Rod Willie, uh, just uh, can you talk about what it was like to play for this guy, uh, number one? And uh, Rod, you were part of the '90 championship. You were really close in '87, Willie, and uh, right thereafter. Or, I mean, can y'all answer the question that he asked? Or are you surprised that? Here we are 30 years later, and Georgia hadn't had notched another one for SEC regular season title. Um, it's all about getting the players, like Coach said. Um, he hit it on the head, the facilities that we had back then. You know, I was talking with John coming in. I remember walking out for a game, and it used to be so cold. You know, you could, you know, just feel everything in there, just feel all the air. But once you get the facilities together and guys start recruiting quality players, they're going to enjoy this. You know, there's no better place to be going to school at than the University of Georgia. This is a family atmosphere. And once these facilities get in place the right way, the way, the way they are now, it's going to attract a lot of top players from around the state. Right. Um, well, uh, kind of going off of what they said, I guess the, the hardest part in today's society is kids look towards themselves. It's more a selfish thing. They look towards the NBA and programs like Kentucky and, and Duke and, you know, programs that will promote them. Um, where they don't have to do as much and then they can take that next step. Uh, really, in my opinion, it takes one. Um, and getting uh, Anthony Edwards, I think, was a big step for the University of Georgia because once you have that one, then the next one, you know, can kind of go on from there. I think that was a huge uh, win for the University of Georgia basketball program kind of put us on the map, kind of separated us uh, from Tech, which traditionally has been um, the school for basketball in this state. Uh, Coach Durham, what he did uh, at the University of Georgia was bring in a lot of the top players uh, in the state of Georgia. And uh, I think Coach Cream, by signing uh, Edwards, made a big move towards that. And I think, you know, within the, the next years, and not just Edwards, but some of these other kids are really improving. Um, Georgia went to the Final Four the year after Dominique left. Uh, and those guys kind of picked it up and coach mentioned role players and stuff like that. Some of these other kids up underneath that was a really good players. Uh, and so I think that bowls really well for the University of Georgia basketball program. Piggyback on what Rod said, if you all look around the country at the amount of players, on, the other players on the other team, I think throughout the whole SEC, you know, each SEC team, SEC team has a quality player from, from the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make us more competitive, we got to keep those guys at home. Yeah. And the more of them stay home, you know, the better this program would be. That Auburn team last year uh, was filled with players from the state of Georgia. 
Um, and so, I mean, that, that just shows that it can be done. And we just got to keep the players here in the state. I mean, it's, it's full of basketball talent. We just got to be able to keep them here. And the problem with this guy record was we couldn't keep guys in school or guys getting hurt. You know, I know my 87 team with the loss of David Dunn, which was, a, I mean, a powerhouse inside and missing him and a lot of guys that, you know, didn't make the grade. You know, I thought, you know, coach had a great chance with that team and we went a long way that year. They called the America team, but if David Dunn when it went down and we wouldn't have lost um, Tony Mack and um, Patrick Hamilton, we would have went a long way. Yeah, that was the 87 year. Right. Willie, Willie came here in 85, and we had a really good team in 85. He was a freshman, and we were one basket away uh, from winning the conference. If we had won that game, we would, we would have tied LSU for a conference championship, and we got beat on the road at Tennessee by, by one, we, we, uh, I think we had Cedric Henderson, who was a, a phenomenal player, probably a, the best player that nobody remembers. Uh, in that game, I think he got 36 points and 17 rebounds. Uh, and we get beat by one up there, but Willie was part of that team. And that team goes to the NCAA in the, in the next year, would have been 86, we go to NIT, and the year he's talking about was 80, 87, and we lost Dunn, who was like 6'8", 225. Uh, he had stress fracture, he was out. Tony Mack, who was our leading scorer at the time, he forgot to wave, you know. He, he wasn't eligible. Pat Hamilton uh, was eligible under the NCAA rules, but wasn't under the SEC rules, we miss him. So we're missing our leading rebound, our leading scorer, and our best defensive player. And so we end up finishing third in the league that, that year. And that's when Willie came came into his own. And he's like six seven, six eight. And and then the next year in, in uh that's eighty seven, eighty eight, we we win twenty and he's all conference and in, ends up uh, on the Olympic team and is a first round draft pick in San Antonio, I think, was it ninth? Wow, uh, 10th. 10th. Uh, sure wasn't eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Willie's career, and then, it, it, you know, it, uh, in the NCAA, we're going against Kansas State out there, and they beat us in overtime when. Heron gets a bad call, <laughs> and they call for the, going over a screen, and, and they beat us in overtime. But they had a guy named Mitch Richmond who ended up going in the NBA too, and uh, Dana Altman. So some of you will or will not know who he is. He's now the coach at Oregon. He was a coach at a, at a junior college in Missouri, and so. Uh, Kansas State coach hires him to come be his assistant. So he gets Mitch Richmond and another guy named Kennedy. And Richmond gets 35 in the second, and for the game, Willie gets 37. And we end up losing by two there. Now, you know, that's this is just a little background on Willie. Over here, these two guys played on the same team, I think, when you were a freshman and, and, and Willie was a senior. And so, you know, Rod was, was a rookie and he played some. And this to give, give you an opportunity how versatile Rod was, is that that, year, that next year we come up here and we got uh, Elmore Spencer in the lineup al along with Marsha Wilson and Allie Kessler. And we start off pretty good. And then all of a sudden, Elmore gets hurt. So we take a 6'11 guy out of the lineup and we put Rod in. <laughs> and so, you know, we have to change the offense that we're running, and then so, we do, and Rod goes into to that position. Uh, and now you've got to play in a high post and, and you, you, we're missing Elmore. So, you know, uh, that, that's probably in 
uh, I guess 88, mm -hmm. and then 89, we didn't have a very good year. I think we ended up losing one less than we won. And then the following year, you know, Rod would have been a junior, and he and Laterra were, were in the backcourt, and that's the year that we're talking about, 1990. And they got Shaquille down at LSU, and LSU's actually favored to win. We go down there, Latero Green had gotten hurt, and so starting guard doesn't go down there. At halftime, we're down 17. With about three or four seconds to go, Rod goes up for three, gets fouled. Now, if he makes, he's got to make three to take it to overtime. He steps up there, one, two, three, all go down. We go overtime. With seven seconds to go, 57 seconds to go in the game, Shaquille's on the line and they're up seven. With about six seconds left in the game, we're on the line and we're up five. <laughs> <laughs> and we may have started to hack a shack because of the rest of the game, we just found Shaquille. Time passes, they come back here. We're down 17 at half that time. We come back and win the game. We lose to Tennessee. We go down to Auburn and win by double figures, 14, 15 points. Mm -hmm. And we, we pick, you know, Rod played play on, he, he's, he's on a team that went back to back, to back tournaments in, in 90 and 91. And so, you know, we, we had a pretty good stretch in there. Uh, and, and then Tubby comes in and does a good job and then he leaves. And if Tubby had stayed, we don't know exactly what would have taken place. In, in my thought, it would have been more positive than anything else. And then it got into one coach and then the next coach and the next coach and the next coach. And it didn't have a lot of consistency until Coach Fox got here and he was here for nine or 10 years. And, and I think Coach Green will be here for a while. 